Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about the theater riser. We all know what the riser is. We have, you know, sometimes two, three rows of seats in our theaters, and the second row has to be, you know, higher than the first row, obviously. So you can see, and this whole platform is called a riser. So why is this important? Well, because the floor to ceiling dimension is the smallest dimension, right, of all the three. So it's this floor to ceiling height. You know, usually we have a lot more length and we have a lot more width, but the ceiling height is always the smallest dimension. Not always, but 98% of the time. So it creates the most low frequency problems. And it's usually that 30, 40, 50 cycle energy, which can be in, in that area. But usually floor to ceiling height, you know, it's, 60, 70, 80 cycles right in there, eight, nine, 10 feet. Saw seven and a half foot ceiling the other day and seven, 75 cycle problem with that. So it's interesting, 7.5 feet and 75 cycle problem. There's probably a mathematical reason, you know, for all of that, right? So anyway, we got 30, 40, 50 cycle energy that we have to deal with in a theater. We got subwoofers. And these monsters are producing huge amounts of low frequency energy. And most of the time, there's too many subwoofers and the room is too small. So we have loading issues and all kinds of things going on. But we have a riser. And the theater riser is close to the listener because you're sitting on top of the riser. And the best place to put low frequency absorption is around source and receiver. So source is the subwoofer we have our carbon technology all around our subwoofers in our new uh, research facility multiple channel facility and we'll do some videos on that but in a theater if you put it in the riser underneath your seats you'll be in great shape because you'll have enough square footage usually if this is the top down view and you have a, a riser here for the seats you know the, the square footage requirements of those risers gives you a lot of horsepower in that floor to ceiling absorption dimension. So, and it's close to the listener. So it'll help with the pressure. Now our carbon technology will fit in the riser because we only need 10 inches of space. Well, 10 inches of space happens to be the height of most of the risers we work with. So we can install our carbon technology into the riser itself. You'll never even see it. Just like our CAW system, we install it in the walls. You never see it. So no big refrigerator style boxes sitting around, but it's all about square footage when it comes to low frequency management. You gotta have enough square footage and it's usually like 50% wall cover on average to minimize the pressures. Eight foot ceilings, you gotta have four foot units, five foot units, that's why our units are 60 inches high. So it's all about surface area coverage and having the right rate and level of absorption. And putting it in a riser underneath the seats is a great place to start. So theater riser, great uh, place to put some low frequency management in our small home theaters. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.